Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyra and this is Kyra Miosa 29. Today's video is something I have not done before on my channel, but I knew that I really wanted to get this out because I have a lot of tips to share on how I travel carry-on only and use certain tips and strategies in order to make a carry-on only amount of things work for me with any type of trip. For this trip in particular, I'm going to show you for a one week long trip to Madeira, Portugal. This is a really exciting trip for me. I'm going with my mom and I've also never been to Portugal so I'm exploring another new country. A lot of these tips you can take and adapt to your own personal preferences. Obviously I travel the way I travel, the way you travel is going to be different too and so take what you can but I hope that you learned something helpful from this video. If you haven't subscribed already please subscribe below. On this channel we do travel and lifestyle content and it'd be awesome to have you join the fam. So come on subscribe and let's get into the video. So the first thing I want to go over is the type of luggage that you are going to be using. So for me, carry-on means a wheeled luggage case. For you, carry-on may mean a medium-sized backpack. It's totally up to personal preference. I really enjoy using a wheeled suitcase, so I actually invested in a really good quality suitcase. You need to invest in something that is going to last. Why I travel carry-on a lot of the time is to save on those checked bag fees. So if you really think about it, where I live, checking a bag costs $25 one way plus tax, and when you are returning home, it's another $25 plus tax to come home. So if you think about all these luggage fees that would add up, especially if you're a frequent traveler, that's a really good investment for you and if you're really committed to traveling carry-on, your suitcase will pay itself off within a few trips just in saving on baggage fees alone. I personally use a suitcase called Travel Pro. I have found Travel Pro is really, really high quality. Yes, it was expensive. I think my case was regular price over $200. I was lucky enough to find this one on sale for around $150. And once you really do your research and you have your bag, you're ready to get into the next step, which is planning what you're gonna be packing for each trip. But I am still learning today. I still learn every single trip on what to pack, what not to pack, what I brought that I didn't use, what I brought that I probably could have left at home. And so every single trip, you have to kind of cater what you're packing. My second tip would definitely be, you have to think about what you're bringing based on the activity Activities you'll be doing on your vacation. So are you going to be doing a lot of hiking? Then you need to cater what gear and clothing you bring to suit the activities that you'll be doing. And I have to preface this by saying that each trip is going to be changed in what you bring with you based on what type of accommodations you will be using on the trip. For example, if I was going to be staying in a hostel, I'd want to make sure that I am researching our towels provided and if not I need to bring certain things with me like a travel towel and other toiletries that will not be provided by the hostel and that is how you become super strategic in how you pack I am very 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 organized so I actually type up and print out a draft packing list and I basically just adapt it to what I need and this includes everything from clothing accessories toiletries electronics and miscellaneous items such as your passport and money and this way I really help ensure that I'm not forgetting important items that I will need while I'm away like prescription medicine or something that I need in my daily life. So on that list, I'm going through exactly what I have pre-planned and thought out, and then I'm gonna start packing. But if organizing like that extreme is not for you, definitely just take my tip from before, think about the activities you're doing while you're in the act of packing, and hopefully that will help tailor your packing so you're bringing what you need and not in excess as well, which I'm still learning. Sometimes I bring too many clothes and I really could have cut down. I'm not trying to come across as a pro here, I'm still learning, but I have learned a lot of things that I want to share. Once you have an idea of what you want to pack, head on into your closet and start pulling clothes that you need to bring with you. So I'm going to do that now and we're going to pick some clothes that I think would be great for my week-long trip to Madeira. And you want to make sure you're being super cutthroat. Are you really going to wear this? Can I wear this piece of clothing in multiple settings? Is it something that's versatile? Can I wear it in the day, but can I also dress it up a little so I can wear it at night if I'm going to a more formal dinner or other event? Half the time when I'm packing, I'm thinking of items that I can wear in multiple settings that I can rewear over and over, and then I can mix and match with other outfits so that I'm not wearing it as a one outfit only. Another tip is you really should be researching the weather forecast for the destination you'll be going to. So I have checked out my weather. I know that it is really mild but warm weather so I'm going to be catering the types of clothing I bring 
for the weather forecast. Yes, it's not always 100% accurate, but you do get a better picture of what types of clothes you need. You really want to have clothes that work for you instead of against you. I know this is tough because I also really enjoy style and fashion, so to bring practical clothes sometimes is a mood killer because you want to still look cute, but sometimes you really have to think about is this clothing truly necessary to bring with me and that's how I pack basically so it's it's actually has a lot more thought to it than it may seem when you're packing some people don't have any strategy they just throw whatever they want in their suitcase but for carry-on you don't really have that luxury because your space is super tight and limited so you really have to get smart about packing so the next thing I want to introduce to you is how to make carry-on packing a little bit easier what was a huge huge game changer for me was packing cubes. When packing cubes came into my life, I couldn't believe that I had ever traveled without using them. They keep everything organized in your bag. This is especially true if you're traveling in a backpack format. If you put your clothes in one packing cube, your underwear in one packing cube, and everything else in other packing cubes like electronics, literally anything can have its own packing cube. I want to show you the first one. I'm not going to get into brand names because literally a lot of places sell these packing cubes nowadays so I just want to show you in terms of size this is a really great size for me for packing clothing and not only is it mesh at the top so you can see exactly what is beneath it at the top but also what I love about this one in particular is it has an extender zipper this one has the option for you to still use the cube and, and make sure it zips but it gives you a little bit more space for an extension so that everything stays nice and compact and organized now there is a long time debate on is folding your clothes more efficient for packing and saving space or is rolling them more efficient? Rolling them huh? more efficient. I am on team roll your clothes. Yes, I roll my clothing. I think that it really helps not only with saving space but with keeping wrinkles out of your clothes. Obviously some items do make more sense to fold. It's up to you. Maybe you're pro fold and you could school me on all the reasons why folding is better than rolling. I don't know. Leave a comment. Do you like to roll your clothes to save space? Or are you a folder to fold your clothes and save space? Let me know. Maybe we can learn from each other in the comments. Okay, so now that that is out of the way, well, now you have to adhere to the rules of airport security. You have to have everything in terms of a liquid, gel, or aerosol under 100 milliliters. So now this is what you have to adhere to as a carry-on only, but whatever you're bringing has got to fit in here. You should be buying or trying to find a travel size version. So for those of you that have a lot of liquids, uh, you really need to cut down your routine if you're only traveling for a week not doing your full seven eight step skincare routine probably isn't gonna hurt you and if it would maybe just take the greatest hits of your routine and only bring those items so it's a luxury to have all of your items but in carry-on we don't have the space for that so you really got to get down to the nitty-gritty what do I need in order to you know take care of my personal hygiene on a week-long basis and when I get home I'll have the rest of my stuff to use when I get back but for now really just bring what you need this is probably one of the biggest challenges for a lot of people it actually can be a learning curve for you if you're just trying carry on only for the first time okay so I wanted to point out that I won't be packing my airport outfit which generally the rule that I follow is you want to wear your heaviest and bulkiest clothes to the airport and also layer as much as possible so that's what I'm doing here this is one tank top that I'm gonna wear as my base shirt followed by my pants that I'm gonna wear and then over top of that tank top I'm bringing the one pullover that I'm gonna be bringing with me this is my rain jacket I recently purchased it from Uniqlo it is waterproof windproof breathable and sweat wicking so it's basically a really great tech jacket and it's really light material that is the one jacket I'm bringing that I will be wearing to the airport so it's not going to be packed in my case my undergarments and underwear so you want to make sure that you pack that too you want to bring your toiletries that you'll have to take out at the airport security check-in 
I also have in here some things like my toothbrush. I have like deodorants. I have a bag that I use when I need to go to the washroom at a shared hostel and carry all my things into the washroom. So I'm gonna leave this behind because I'm going to a hotel and I don't need that. I love this. This is a foldable laundry bag. So as soon as I start wearing my clothes and they get dirty, I will put them in this bag and it lets me know where my dirty clothes are in one area. This is the foldable brush. I'm obsessed with wet brush brand and this is a wet brush that almost is like a full size once it's all assembled, but it's got a mirror and it just folds away like that for easy travels. I'm bringing these runners and they are trail shoes so I can hike in these and also work out in them so that's pretty cool. I'm going to be wearing those to the airport so I don't need to pack them. I'm bringing this pair of Birkenstocks. It goes with a lot of things. This will be my casual shoe that's comfortable but I also need to bring something that I can wear that's a bit dressier so I'm bringing these leather sandals which are still comfortable but they are dressy so you'll just pack those. I usually just pack shoes along the edges just to save space. Well, this packing cube contains a lot of the electronics that I'm going to be bringing as well as extra camera lenses and something else that I'll be bringing definitely is the camera I'm using right now to shoot this video. So I'm keeping all my electronics, charging cables, everything like that in one spot and that will just fit nicely in there. And another thing is this bag. This has the makeup and other jewelry and any kind of beauty related item. Just keep it organized. You also want to make sure that you're not overstuffing your case because you want to leave room for purchasing things when you're traveling. You never know when you'll find something that you really want to bring with you. We can just make sure that it's all situated and we'll give it a close. There's still space, like it's not overflowing, which is awesome. So in my personal bag, I'm gonna be making sure I bring a pen to fill out forms for when you're entering customs and you need to fill out customs forms. Always a super good idea to bring a reusable water bottle. This way you reduce the amount of waste that you're producing in the country. You also wanna bring your important travel documents. This includes your passport, a photocopy of your passport, maybe you have a Nexus card, other photo identification besides your passport. Everything, make sure you put it in there. You also don't want to forget your cash and the currency that you'll be using. I always make sure that I have currency with me before I arrive in the country. Obviously don't forget your cell phone. This is mine. I bring it with me everywhere. Or if you want to bring a tablet instead of a phone that's up to you but I usually use my phone when I'm away with a local sim card. And also you want some entertainment so I'm gonna bring my e-reader. I have a lot of books loaded on here and this is gonna keep me entertained in the slow moments of travel in the airport. But also when you're relaxing on vacation, this is a really great thing to have. All right, everyone, hopefully you enjoyed this video. That's how I travel carry on only for a week long or even longer trips. I hope that you found it helpful. If you are already a carry on traveler and you have a tip that I didn't mention in the video, leave it in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more travel and lifestyle content. I'll see you guys in the next video and happy travels. Bye.